Soho Park, being sick and tired of people, wishes for a place without any humans. One day, as he's on his way to meet up with some friends, he hears a massive explosion. Before he can even figure out what's going on, massive lightning bolts start falling from the sky, destroying everything on impact. Soho, fearing for his life, tries to run through the chaos as people begin to panic. As he jumps across the road, he comes straight into the path of an oncoming truck. Soho braces himself for impact, but right at that moment, a blinding light sucks him into another dimension. Soho wakes up in a forest, unable to put together what just happened. He looks up into the sky and notices two moons and griffins soaring above. He jolts up when he hears the howling of wolves and the growls of a bear. Hunching behind a rock, Soho watches in horror as a pack of wolves attacks a massive bear. The bear, being outnumbered, gets overrun by the wolves as they gang up on it, ripping the bear to shreds. Soho turns around and notices a small white wolf cub looking at him, striking fear into his heart. Soho runs for his life since that is all he can do. A notification pops up in front of him, telling him that his stamina has grown by one, startling him. He trips and falls into the valley below, thinking that he might be hallucinating since he's sure he just heard a voice. Suho looks up and notices some strange fruit growing on a plant. As he starts to eat, a massive snake suddenly strikes him, but right at that moment, a giant frog sinks its teeth into the snake. Suho, struck by fear, simply falls unconscious. Days pass, and Suho adapts to his surroundings, driven solely by his will to survive, while the wolves from before persistently hunt him. One day, while eating a giant banana in a tree, Soho spots the white wolf cub still shadowing him. By now, he's grown a liking to its presence. Suddenly, saliva drips onto his back, causing him to look up and discover a furious, massive gorilla glaring down at him. Swiftly, he seizes a vine and swings away as the gorilla attacks, shattering the branch he was perched on. The gorilla collapses to the ground and, upon noticing the cub, lunges to attack it. Suho, aware that he must confront the situation, seizes a branch and thrusts it into the gorilla's eye. Enraged by the pain, the gorilla hurls a tree at Suho and charges forward, intent on killing him. Just as the gorilla is about to deliver the fatal blow, the wolf pack swoops in, attacking ferociously and tearing the gorilla to shreds, while Suho falls unconscious. He believes it might be his end, but the wolves spare his life, interpreting his actions as a defense of the cub, which is the heir of the wolf king. Decades pass, and Soho is gradually embraced by the wolf pack, integrating as one of their own. He becomes a member of the pack, participating in their territorial conflicts to uphold their way of life. Amid this brutal battle for survival, he forges numerous close bonds with furry companions and mourns the loss of many others. By this juncture, he loses track of the time he's been marooned, having abandoned the notion of counting centuries. Yet, perplexingly, his body remains impervious to aging. Then one day, in the midst of a skirmish against the gorillas, the same blinding light that had once transported him to this unfamiliar world reappears, whisking Soho back to Earth. Choi, a member of the Returnee Control Department, investigates an anomaly, considering the potential emergence of a dungeon in the heart of the city, when a portal abruptly materializes. Suspecting a possible dungeon breach, Choi readies herself for combat but halts as she observes Soho emerging from the portal. Soho roars, instilling fear within her. Suho falls unconscious and Choi is finally able to move, shocked by the immense pressure he had. Suho is taken to a hospital where he recounts his story to a doctor who happily listens to his story and tells him that he will be discharged in a few days. Meanwhile, Choi goes over Suho's file, finding it hard to believe that he got appraised as an F rank. Wanting to confirm it for herself, she takes Suho's and decides to deliver it to him herself. She goes to the hospital to meet him and finds Suho eating his food like a barbarian, making her wonder if she's losing her touch. After introducing herself, she hands Soho some forms to fill out. She explains that her department helps returnees like him readjust to society. She asks Suho if he learned anything like magic while he was away Suho tells her that he just lived in a forest to survive, making Choi realize that he had been running for his life for 10 years, shocking Suho as he was sure he had been in the forest for a thousand years. Soho points at the form, explaining that he disappeared in 2015 and reappeared in 2025. She gives him his identification card and departs, advising him to reunite with his family once he's recovered. Suho opens his file, surprised that his family is still alive. Soho had given up all hope after staying in the forest for so long. He thought that his family and friends would have been long dead if he ever got back to Earth but now that they are still alive, Suho wants nothing more than to be with them. Upon reviewing his file, Suho realizes that all of his family members, except for his younger brother Juno, have passed away. 
Filled with anticipation to reunite with Juno, Suo eagerly heads to his doctor, who agrees to discharge him and arranges a taxi to take him to his brother's home. On his way there, Suho learns from the driver about the day of the catastrophe that hit Earth 10 years ago, wiping out 10% of its population. After that, dungeons started appearing everywhere and the world was thrust into an era of monster hunters. The driver also tells Suho that he will need to pass the hunter exam to get a license to enter dungeons and clear them. Suho arrives at a house where an elderly woman questions his presence. When Suho explains he's looking for Juno, the woman curtly denies anyone by that name living there and goes inside. Overhearing her conversation about lone sharks, Suho's worry grows. He picks up a letter, confirming his suspicion of his brother's debts. Realizing that his brother needs help Suho leaves to find a way to earn money. Suho goes to the RCD to apply for the hunter exam, but his application gets declined. The receptionist tells him that he is still short a few points which he can earn by going to an awakening academy or directly to the field. Baffled by the system, Suho decides to head to Suwon Field to hunt some goblins. As he's about to exit the city, the guards refuse to let him exit the city as he does not have a hunter's ID. Right at that moment, a jeep bursts in through the gate with the driver being attacked by a goblin. While the guards get busy quickly trying to dispatch the goblin, Suho silently slips out of the gate. Navigating through the city's ruins, he contemplates whether other cities around the world share a similar fate. When night falls, Soho starts to hunt. He runs around for a while, noticing that he is significantly weaker. He hears some growls coming from a distance and hurries over to investigate. Soho finds an injured dog cornered by goblins. Happy that he has found some enemies, Suho kills them all with ease. However, just when he's done, massive system error notifications start popping up in front of him. Soho, startled by the system errors, swipes them away as more goblins surround him. After easily killing them all, more systems failure messages pop up, annoying Suho as he rarely got pop-ups since he maxed his stats about a hundred years ago. He swipes them all away until a new notification of a performance store pops up. He opens it up and realizes that he can spend some points to buy a few items. He turns around and notices the injured dog taking its final breaths as its cub hunches over it. Hesitant at first, Soho decides to take the cub with him. The next morning, Suho ties up all the goblins and takes them back to RCD where he is given 2.1 million won for everything. With finally some money in his hand, Soho quickly goes back to find his brother however when he arrives he notices Juno on his knees, beaten up, surrounded by lone sharks. Juno looks at his brother in shock as he walks up to him, ignoring everyone else. Soho was never helpful in Juno's life whatsoever. Even when he was being bullied right in front of him, Soho just chose to ignore him. Whether he went missing or not, Juno didn't care in the slightest, but now he is right in front of him. Juno attempts to ask Soho how he's managed to stay alive, but the lone shark interrupts, irritating Suho. Soho clenches his head, swiftly tossing the lone shark aside with a single swing of his arm. Another man attempts to kick him, but Soho effortlessly snaps his leg. Shifting his attention to the last one, Soho gives him some money, instructing him to leave. Juno takes him to his home, where he introduces him to his son, Jianu, and the old lady. When they sit down to have a drink, Soho gets straight to the point and asks Juno how much he owes. Juno tells him that he is 50 million won in debt but has found a long-distance transportation job that pays well. Soho, realizing that being a hunter helps him earn money faster, asks Juno to assist him instead. Suho returns to the RCD, where he receives congratulations for leveling up and receives a phone as a reward. He opens his system windows and notices that all his stats are significantly lower than before. After informing Juno that clearing debts takes precedence over the hunter exam, Suho embarks towards the Namiangju gate to hunt monsters. After passing through the gate and venturing into a forest, Suho decides to run briefly and test his abilities. Pausing to catch his breath, he accesses his stats window and scrutinizes it intently. Realizing that he has become weaker, the only choice he has right now is to start training. Soho suddenly hears the sound of metal clashing. Realizing it's a fight between humans, he excitedly rushes over to see what's going on but gets disappointed when he sees it's just a few men cornered by some criminals. As he turns to leave, a C-rank criminal named Guzik Choi emerges from a vehicle. Overhearing one of the men about a 4,000 bounty on Guzik, Suho realizes that capturing him could settle his brother's debt. With this incentive, Soho leaps into action to engage in the fight. Locking eyes with Guzik, he declares his intention to apprehend him for the reward, making Guzik laugh. Soho suddenly feels as if he's been petrified. Guzik tells him that since he looked him in the eyes, he has restrained him. 
He tells his men to attack, but Soho lightly punches him in the face, surprising everyone. Soho grits his teeth with excitement and clenches his fists to fight as Guzik had just used magic. Guzik restrains Suho again and tries to stab him from below, but Soho easily knees his face, breaking his nose. He then proceeds to punch Guzik to a bloody pulp, telling him that he's a letdown. He turns to the other men, who instantly end up surrendering. When he asks if they have any bounties on them, they all try to deny it but the men who they were tell Suho that they all are criminals, and he will get something in return for turning them in. After tying them up and throwing them in their car, Soho starts to head back with the men who keep thanking him for saving their lives. Seeing the dungeon portal in the distance, Soho asks one of the men a favor to take him to it and enter with him since he doesn't have a license. As soon as they appear on the other side of the portal, Soho notices that the dungeon's door has disappeared. Upon asking, the man explains to him that there are many doors to the portal leading to many dungeons and it will reappear once they clear it. Once he learns that the easiest way to clear the dungeon is to wipe out every monster or kill only the strongest one, Suho tells the man to wait and dashes off with incredible speed, wiping out every monster in the vicinity in almost an instant. Despite getting fewer drops, Soho is more concerned with his stats since he is leveling up. Seeing that he has enough performance points to get some skills, Soho decides to take Tree Spirit summoning first. Summoning the Tree Spirit, Soho realizes that it's from the jungle he had been stranded in. He orders the tree spirit to find the remaining goblins and uses his remaining points to get search and track skills. He uses his new skills but is only able to locate the goblins that he had already killed. In that moment, he starts to hear a growl. Rushing toward it, Soho finds the man pinned to the ground by a unique looking goblin. Upon asking for his help, Soho easily kills the goblin, surprising the man. Once they exit the dungeon, Soho thanks the man and heads off to change his clothes. Once he's done a man, Minhia Kang, captain of the 27th Battalion of Shilla Guild greets him, asking for a moment of his time. Kang extends an invitation to Soho to join his guild, but Soho politely declines, leaving Kang surprised. Despite Kang's attempts to persuade him, Soho asserts that he's not the type to work under someone and departs, catching Kang off guard. Soho makes his way home to meet Juno, delivering the money and instructing him to promptly repay the loan. He also tells Juno to get some meat and soju for a celebration. As the evening advances, Soho and Jiano name the cub Beku. Juno eventually arrives back. However, the moment he emerges from the truck, he collapses onto the ground. Realizing that the lone sharks have attacked him, Soho wastes no time and heads directly to their office and forces his way in. The men, seeing Soho forcefully enter, try to retaliate but he uses his monstrous strength to rip out a vent, hurling it at them and sending them flying backward. He then swiftly neutralizes all of them with remarkable speed and uses a table to pin their boss against the wall. Drawing close, Suho informs the boss of his intention to settle Juno's debt but the boss tells that a returnee cannot harm an innocent citizen. Juno seizes the envelope containing the money and repeatedly slaps the boss's face, insisting that when someone is offering payment, he should accept it and part ways. Fearing for his life, the boss begs him to stop and announces that Juno's loan as of today has been settled. As he leaves, the boss swears to take his revenge. The next day, Soho brings Juno some fast food to the hospital where Juno tells him that he will be discharged tomorrow. Juno tells him that he should apply for some guilds if he clears the hunter exam tomorrow but Suho, after being the king of wolves, cannot work under anyone. He looks at Juno and tells him that he won't be joining any guild since he will be starting his own. Soho heads off to the exam site which is bustling with candidates. He notices a boy, Dong Su crouched down streaming the exam through his phone. Intrigued, Soho gets in close to see what he's doing, annoying Dong Su. Soon after, the inspectors arrive, and the candidates are divided into groups. Much to Suho's surprise, his instructor is Swayong. They are told to proceed to their assigned rooms where Suho notices Dong Su from earlier, slumping in distress. As he asks what's wrong, Dong Su tells him that Swayong is known as the witch since she kicks out everyone when gets upset which blows away their 3 million won application fee. Suho tells him that it will be his fault if gets disqualified and not to blame the inspector which annoys him. Dong Su tells him to watch his tone and Suho provokes him, telling him to fight it out if he has a problem. Before Choi arrives, everyone quickly heads over to a cage to see Dong Su and Suho's fight. Just when they are about to begin, Swayong bursts into the room, making everyone run. She heads straight to the cage and orders them to fight, with the condition that the one who emerges defeated will face elimination. Dong Su gets ready to fight, telling Suho not to blame him as he's about to lose. He leaps at Suho who just simply knocks him out with a single punch, surprising Swayong. He turns to Choi, telling her to step into the ring next and fight him, annoying her. 
He tells her that if he wins, Dong Su gets to stay. Antagonized by his ego, Swayong steps into the ring asking Suo if he's an irregular but he has no idea what it is. She tells him that she'll let him know if he's alive after their fight and immediately attacks him with incredible speed. Soho blocks every single one of her attacks, surprised at how powerful she is. Soho patiently waits for an opening and after spotting one, strikes. Choi, realizing her mistake, tries to block it with her shield but it is instantly shattered. Just when he's about to land the final blow, Choi stops him telling him that he won. She asks what he wants to know, and Soho asks if there are other powerful women like her. When she tells him that there probably aren't, Soho bluntly tells her to make a baby with him. Completely taken aback by his crude approach, Swayong slaps him across the face and stomps off. Dong Su wakes up, sad that he's been eliminated but Soho gives him the good news, telling him that he can stay. That's it for the video, if you enjoyed the video then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.